as the quotas being used as filling up quotas. So they, they want to say, no, we have 50% women in our leadership, or we have a, a an executive that is dominated by women. But at the same time, those women do not have the voices to represent the constituencies that they are there for. Um, they do not have the, the platform. They're not given the platform to, to represent those, um, those views of women on the ground. And that has been some of my, my experiences, you know, having to be 10 times better as a leader to just be seen as a good leader in the first place or having to be 10 times louder as a leader just to get an ear someone to listen to exactly what it is you're trying to say or exactly what it is you're trying to lead them to um and then my personal favorite and take that as sarcasm but my personal favorite being the what what do they call us um the angry black women you know you're the woman who exists in this political space and every time you speak um whatever contribution you're making is seen as you being angry you're not valid um you're invalidated you are you're overreacting you are too loud you're, you're too loud for a woman in a space um that is dominated by these men and I think the worst one would be having to lead with quote unquote mediocre men, okay? Um, having to lead with people who do not have the capacity to lead, um, but just by the virtue of being men, they will be given platform over you. They will be listened to over you. And those are some of the challenges that I can say I've experienced in the political space, which is the, the space that I'm most dominant in. Um, but I've had to I've had to create a space for myself where I'm sane, because these things can drive you insane, trust me. Um, where I'm sane, but I'm also grounded in in, in, in my leadership, you know, I need to know exactly what I'm doing, even though the world wants to convince me continuously that I'm a crazy person and what I'm asking for is way too much because women shouldn't have that much, right? Um, so what I've done and what I've tried to do, please take this as trying to do because I've not perfected um, a lot of the things that keep me sane. I think sometimes I do believe that I'm going insane and I have to remind myself that I'm actually valid. Um, but I've tried to create a solid support structure and surround myself with people who are like-minded, right? So surrounding myself with other strong women is has has kept me say it has kept me valid it has kept me um understanding that whatever it is that i'm trying to raise is important that i am valid in the space i'm existing in i am not just a quota i'm not just representing women in numbers but that i am actually representing in voices and views and advocation of 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 um marginal people's um, views, right? And another part is creating a peaceful environment. So one thing that I struggle with is separating the work from the, the personal. So I take everything from the office with me and I take it home. I think sometimes I dream about student issues and I wake up because it's a nightmare for me and I don't know how to solve some of these issues. Um, but I've, I've had to try to find a balance between serving others and serving my mental health and well-being. Because if I am pouring out of an empty cup, I don't think I'm serving anyone efficiently. Um, so so that's that <laughs> and i think i've needed to come to terms with understanding that i'm actually not superwoman regardless of how much i like to believe that i can be a superwoman i can do every and anything and i will finish everything i will do well in academics and then i'll also be a great fantastic leader who solves everyone's problems. I've had to come to a point where I understand that I can't fix 
everything. I'm still struggling with that because every now and then, you know, I believe that I am a superwoman, but I'm, I'm really not. Um, but I, I, I take... I take servitude extremely seriously. And I think one of the things I've had to unlearn is punishing myself for not being able to solve something or not being able to help someone. Um, and then the biggest one that I think I'm trying to learn myself is I need to take a break. I need to be able to walk away, step back and say, you know what, I've done that for the day. I will continue tomorrow. Um, others who follow me on social media will see that I'm one of those people who can leave the office at 1 a.m. in the in the AMs um, and come back again at 8, 9, 10. And that is not a conducive environment for someone who's supposed to be serving students efficiently because at some point you're going to burn out. Um, look, I... I don't do things perfectly. I, I am struggling myself with this leadership journey, but I hope that, I hope that I'm being told I have five minutes left. I, I speak a lot, I apologize, but I'm concluding. I hope that in all of the mess and all of the, what I've said today, somebody is going to walk out of this having picked up at least one thing that they can implement in their lives to make their leadership journey a little bit better. And beyond that, I hope that you are able um, to, 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 to channel yourself and to find a reason to extend yourself to serve other people. Let me leave it at that. Um, thank you so much for the platform. Wow, thank you so much, Liseko, for that amazing, amazing speech that you gave. I think the beauty from like of your story is just the fact that you can actually derive something from, you know, your personal story. I think we sometimes think that your leadership journey has to start when you have a platform, when you're now at VIT and you're the SRC deputy president, but people don't realize the seeds that are sown just by actually the people who raised you and the people who surround you. I think that's so important and it's, it's extremely helpful to just look at the people who surround you. Um, so I, I, we had thought that maybe you could take two or three questions. So if there's anybody who has a question for Lesejo, um, you can just maybe raise your hand and ask her, but I think we'll limit it to just one or two questions, and then we're going to move on with the agenda. Anyone with a question? If you do have a question, you can just simply unmute yourself and then ask a question. Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, all right, so I think two people are speaking. Um, Mpo, you can go first, and then um, the lady who was about to ask a question can go after that. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, firstly, I'd love to apologize for not showing my face because my okay. phone cracked and the camera just doesn't show well. But hopefully next week, everything will be fine. I just wanted to know, what would you say are your biggest regrets? Um, as you do say that in most cases, you are talking about the good things, even though you're telling us it, it wasn't easy to, to, or it isn't easy to get the things that you want, but what would you say were your biggest regret? All right, and maybe let's get the second question, then you can just answer them all at once. Okay, hi, Lisa. Um, so I just wanted to ask, how do you, practically tackle being in a male dominated space? All right, thank you for your questions, ladies. Um, so Lesejo, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Um, I'll go with the first question and then I'll go to the second one. So the lady asked, what are some of my biggest regrets? I think immediately what comes to mind is, I think I was the chairperson of the School of Social Science at the time. And I overextended myself to a point where I had nothing left in me to serve anything or anyone, including myself. Um, I burnt out and I crashed 
and there was very little anyone could do to get me back up because I ignored the signs that my body and my mind were tired and I had done too much to myself, overextended myself, poured out of an empty cup and poured out of that empty cup as well. And I had nothing left to give. I, I think that was one of the worst years of my leadership life because every day I woke up and I felt like a failure. I, I, I felt as if I shouldn't have availed myself to lead. I shouldn't be in school. I, I, I wanted to give up on everything. And the base of that was the fact that I was not able to take a break or did not want to take a break and overextended myself and ignored the signs that I was burning out to a point where I... <laughs> There was nothing that could be done for me. So just to just to give you a sense of, 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 of what I'm saying, um, I had a student come in with something extremely traumatic that had happened to them. But because I was dealing with so much in my personal life at the time, which was a similar experience to what they were saying, I had no clue how I was going to do it. I had nothing left in me to even the emotional part of it. I had nothing left in me. I just broke down. So my biggest regrets have been not taking it. It's not taking a break. It's overextending, pouring out of an empty cup and not having anybody there to hold my hand or to, to validate me and assist me in this leadership journey, thinking that I could do it on my own. And then to go to the second question, how do I survive or what are the practical things I do to survive a male dominated space? <sighs> um, the honest answer is I don't think I've figured it out completely. But the good side of that is I have maneuvered it so far. I think every single space comes with different types of men, you know, um, they're not all the same. So what I've done is I categorize them and I plan on how to, how to maneuver those, um, those spaces. I ensure that I'm surrounded by other women. I ensure that I enter there and I've hyped myself up and I know my story. I've recited it 10 times how I'm going to, to say something in a meeting or how I'm going to approach a problem. Um, I just always make sure that I know what I'm talking about because that's where they like to catch us, you know. <laughs> they always, they're always waiting for that aha moment where they think you don't know what you're talking about. So I think it's just having everything in order, knowing exactly what I'm doing, what I'm saying, and then maneuvering them. They are a surprising bunch. They really have a lot up their sleeves, so can't really predict them all the time. But that's how I've been doing it. I haven't figured it out, guys. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't end patriarchy yet. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, Lissipo. I think we can all attest to how impactful the speech was. I think I even took some wisdom nuggets from that. So thank you so very much for that. Um, and if there's anything that actually really stood out to me is that the fact that, the fact that you say that you built a strong or solid support system or you surrounded yourself with like-minded people. And I think this is one of like the really amazing, you know, um, thing about Girl Leader, the fact that you are surrounded by like-minded people. So we are going to take this opportunity to ensure that we get to know each other um, and know how like-minded we actually are. We are moving on to speed networking, but because we're running a bit um, behind time, I think initially it was supposed to be about five minutes rotation, but maybe if we can do people, when you get into a lift and you meet somebody, you literally just have a few minutes to actually start a conversation. And most times the first things that you mention about yourself or the things that you say are going to strike people. And that's what they're going to remember most about you. And there they realize whether they want to continue actually, you know, delving into like a better relationship, get to know you better, 
So I think that's amazing. What you will learn is that there is going to be a great deal of like breakout rooms when you are going to be having your sessions, um, the sessions that are to come. So you sort of have to get used to it in terms of joining, ensuring that you participate and then joining the main room as well. So it's something that you have to get used to. But I think thus far, um, it was it was interesting. I think a lot of you guys actually got to meet a lot of people that um, you can sort of connect with. So we do encourage that obviously you continue in conversation with people that you have met here. Some people were exchanging numbers. Some people now get to know each other from social media handles. So that's amazing. Obviously, this is a training platform where you get to be better leaders. So we are not saying that it's a networking platform, right? So next thing, um, we are going to be moving on to our information session that we're going to be hearing from our COO. So I'm going to hand over to her and she's going to give us um, just a bit of information for the next 15 minutes. All right. Hey, all right, sure. Thank you, Miriro, for giving me the floor and welcome everyone to Girl Leader. I hope everyone can hear me and see me clearly. Okay, so I guess I've been, I have been just given like 10 minutes to pitch Girl Leader. So I hope I'll give you the information that is so valuable to you guys that you get so pumped up to be part of Girl Leader. So firstly, I'm Vanessa and I'm the COO, which is the Chief Operating Officer, which is like a high position. Trust me, it is a high position. You'd also want to be part of it next year. So Girl Leader, it's an NGO that is train young girls and women to become leaders and also occupy bigger spaces within the business world or it can be any part of um, of becoming a better leader that you can be given. And also we have a flagship program that is the leadership program that you guys are going to be part of. And I'm sure you're also excited to be part of it. And I'm also here to talk about the three essential pillars of grow leader that you guys are going to be taken um, to with your facilitators that you're going to meet the amazing ones. And um, this is the communication pillar. And the communication pillar means that as a leader, you should learn to communicate. Your voice is the one that leads. Your voice is the one that's going to be heard by people for you to be a leader. Then the second pillar that we have is the mental pilot, guys. Mental pilot is important because you need to understand who you are. You need to have the space that you are just yourself. You can lead your own way without anyone having to tell you to do this way, do this thing, but you just become yourself. And that's why we have the mental pilot. And then we also have the, uh, your hand is up. Do you have any questions before I go further? No, it was no, no. <laughs> okay, 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 that's fine, that's fine. Um, moving on, we also have the which one did I left out? So communication, mental uh, mental pilot, and then project me pillar. Project me is one of my favorite because that's when you get to grow as a person and to show the person that who you are. It's like personal branding, branding yourself as a leader because mm -hmm. I believe yourself as a leader it's how people see you as a leader what type of leader you are are you a charismatic leader are you someone who's willing to work with people it's how you project yourself and all these things be part of the leadership program that you guys are taking part in and also another crucial thing that i also want to tell you about is the organizational value which is being authentic Guys, you cannot imagine a space that just makes you be the person that you want to be. Like a space that just pushes you to occupy those spaces because this organization was founded by our CEO, Non Dumiso Tago, and she had the vision that women were not getting enough spaces within the business world. And so there is need to push that agenda and also working in according with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 5, which is of gender equality. Because in the world we are living in, women get the small piece jobs or only a few get to go at the top. 
like look at it right now. We have like a few, few more presidents. And when I was in one of the breakout rooms, I met someone who did, who's doing politics, economics, and I met lawyers. And I'm like, wow, that means a lot of us are actually going to occupy bigger positions because we are here now. We're here to learn to become better leaders. And you guys will learn from us as we are also going to learn from us because I believe learning doesn't end. It's a continuous thing. Even when you become successful, it always continues. It always continues to build up. We can even look at Miss Universe. Those of you, you guys know when she won the Miss Universe in 2019, she said that women should occupy spaces. She's already occupied the space just by being at the top and being an activist and making sure and also making us want to create such platforms, these platforms that um, bring us together as women and also make us better leaders. And um, another crucial thing that I would also want to mention in this is that in this space, you're free to be who you are. You are free to ask questions. You are free to, to, to make us also learn things that you know. Because at the end of the day, we do not know everything, but we also want to learn from you guys. As you, I don't know if you guys can recap when um, our guest speaker Lisa, Lisa, um, spoke. She said that she was in a moment whereby she, sometimes she was having a hard time to occupy the women's spaces because of the support system that she didn't have. But then she created a support system for herself and hence girl leader is that kind of support system because some of you have actually exchanged numbers with other participants and i'm sure that is the support system that you get because you get someone who actually motivates you to become a leader because you should it shouldn't be a thing of like i would do it alone on my own i should be the only leader no we are going to run the world as girls at the end of the day, do you know who runs the world? It's the girls. So let's actually push the agenda to make this thing happen. And I hope everyone is excited to learn the new things that are coming up that have been prepared by our amazing team. And I hope you guys are going to enjoy this program and also tell others to also be part of it. And next year, you guys can also apply for our graduate support program, which also enhances the things that you have learned. But then it's like kind of like putting in a nutshell so that when you go into the world, you're like that ultimate leader who has been taught everything and is ready to take over the world. Um, that will be all for me, Miriro. And yeah, I, I hope everyone is excited as I am. <laughs> We are definitely excited. I don't know whether I should be speaking for everyone, but just for me, I am certainly very excited. And I yeah. think, um, you know, the fact that you guys have taken the step to actually participate in Girl Leader, it means that you care about your leadership journey and you want to become a holistic leader, which is very important. So some of like, obviously the pillars that she mentioned, I think, obviously, I think they target, um, you know, different aspects of who you are as a leader, because at the end of the day, you want to be somebody who is holistic, who has sort of cared enough to ensure that they're investing in every part of, they are, uh, of who they are as a leader. Um, anything, if anything that, um, that really stood out to me from what Lesejo said, our guest speaker, she was saying that, you know what, I realized that I can't pour from an empty cup. I also mm -hmm. need to ensure that I, I take care of myself. I need to ensure that I'm able to serve others because leadership at the end of the day, it's not about you being at the top and people yes. seeing what it is that you can do, but it is rather about service and actually ensuring that you are dealing with the problem. You are a 